good afternoon and welcome back. And I have a question for you guys today. What do you think should be done in instances of rape allegations, specifically for the proposed victim? That's uh, proposed in case the rape allegation is false. I'm all for freedom of speech, obviously, and if you encourage people to talk things out, then you should be able to get more details, especially um, closer to the time of the crime, in order to provide more details to indict the offender. And of course, if the allegation is false, then you should be able to see um, contradictions in the story would show the allegation for being false, and therapists could provide that. But here we have from the BBC, Rape Victims Therapy Guidance Needs Urgent Review, Labour. Labour is calling for an urgent review into therapy for rape victims, amid claims the current guidance discourages people from seeking counselling. CPS guidance states complainants should avoid discussing details of their abuse with a therapist while a trial is ongoing, and the therapy notes could be used as evidence in court. Shadow Attorney General Shami Chakrabarti, okay, uh, said this was cruel. <laughs> Good, good example of uh, the patriarchy there, isn't it? That only straight white men achieve. Definitely not. Never mind. Never mind, patriarchy, you're failing. You're not very good at this, patriarchy, are you? <laughs> uh, the government said guidance actively encourages therapy for victims. Labour's move follows a vice investigation which claimed rape victims were being told not to seek full therapy by police and specialist services. They've also been asked to hand phones to the police, um, and this is in order to try and find out how or if there were any previous instances which would have led to the rape on that occasion, or if it is fabricated, for example, Mattress Girl, you know, that saga in America, um, and the messages kind of show that it is false, considering she was very much into him beforehand. Um, and we do have a rise in false rape allegations, which are very damaging, even if it doesn't get to court, that you can simply say that about a man, and you can destroy his career. And depending on his relationship with his girlfriend or wife, that they can leave him as well. And he's always tired with that rush, even if it isn't true. It is a career ender, maybe even a life ender, and can result in suicide for the man. Four times more likely than women, of course, with suicide. And indeed, also a male student in America who filmed the occasion of a girl getting really annoyed with him for not having sex with him, was still expelled from the school, despite video evidence showing that no sexual assault occurred like she stated that it did against him. And this kind of thing shows the Mike Pence um, idea uh, that is to not have one-on-one -on -one engagements with women. Independent Man, the Australian YouTuber, has done some good work on this, and Tim Pool has also done some work on the Him Too in India. Uh, the idea with the Mike Pence strategy is that because uh, false sexual assault allegations or rape allegations can be so damaging and easily mentioned by a spiteful woman, then it is best to not have one-on-one -on -one meetings with women, which is resulting in women not getting the uh, mentorship or mentoring that they require in order to excel in their career, and it is hurting their career prospects and seems to be an, an issue where feminism is hurting women again, similar to, oh, where have all the good guys gone? And a load of <laughs> normal people, not normal women in particular, are just wanting a man to be a man. But of course, seeing as the vocal minority of third wave feminists or radical feminists in particular um, make their voices heard and push their <laughs> anti-male message, or at least anti-masculinity message, seeing as toxic masculinity just means masculinity, and Honey Badger Radio has done stuff about this, then you can see why women are now unhappier than men. So they say, why are rape prosecutions falling? And it says here in another BBC article that in the year to December 2015, 14% of rapes recorded by police in England and Wales led to a criminal charge compared to 17% for all crimes. And by December 2018, the proportion of rapes leading to a charge had fallen to under 2% compared with 8% for all crimes. During the same period, the number of rapes recorded by police rose from 30,000 to 40,000, a 40% increase. And in 2007, there were 14,000 recorded offences of rapes, so there has been a troubling in numbers in a decade. And you can say, well, if this is real, maybe it's due to importing particular cultures that are very anti-white, as mentioned in the um, court trials. Or you could say, well, it is due to the increase in encouragement to... Uh, or the increase in comprehensive nature of covering what is defined as rape, and regretful sex can then also be classified as rape. 
So the guidance that aims those involved in arranging therapy, therapies and lawyers involved in making decisions in allowing cases in England and Wales. It was introduced in 2002 when Labour was in government. So there's pre-child discussions of alleged sexual assault may lead to allegations of coaching and ultimately the failure of the criminal case and advises that therapists should avoid exploring in detail the substance of the specific sexual assault allegations. So it, it comes down to how much can you help the person who's um, claimed of being raped without then jeopardising the court case. And that's why I leave it up to you guys. I am intrigued. They do say here that... Rebecca Hitchin, campaign manager for End Violence Against Women, says that confusing and cruel guidance should be reviewed. And it is worthy, uh, it is noteworthy to say that they do not mention rape being only affected, only affecting women. It's just that the only examples they use are female and their spokespeople are for end violence against women. Uh, she added it was shocking the rape victims were being deterred from accessing life-saving specialist support because of issues with the criminal justice system. And there was a rape victim, alleged rape victim, said she reported to the police literally hours after it took place, and it was kind of confusing that you've gone through this event and not exactly what you've meant to do. It's kind of disappointing, she said. I'm having pre-trial therapy, so basically I'm not allowed to talk about the event that happened to me. And they ended up with saying, corners are being cut, and it's the most vulnerable victims that are paying the price. But you, <laughs> you do have the thought that maybe police don't want to investigate because they could be uh, considered racist. And we have this lovely thing here from the Daily Mirror uh, just a couple of weeks ago that says grooming gang victim I was raped by more than 100 men but police arrested me not them the woman now 23 was raped by more than 100 men until so she was repeatedly arrested by police and now receives death threats and of course this comes um, in the last few weeks that 14 new Rotherham offenders have been arrested 38 men and 2 women so she says that it was she was 11 year old when it began her rape has plied her with drugs to make it easier to force her into sex. The police used the teenager with a warning for possessing them. And they even arrested her on suspicion of facilitating a child sex offence after she and another underage girl got into an abuser's car. So this is clearly an issue when you can't go after a particular culture or subculture in the United Kingdom or England or anywhere in the world, really, because you have concerns about being called racist, as was found out that uh, Labour are purposefully suppressing this in order to not create a race issue and it's it's odd how some people have an idea of how other people should live their lives according to themselves like um obviously recently with birmingham and the lgbt school well with jess phillips labor gumpy jess phillips <laughs> basically telling the muslim that they're not being a proper muslim <laughs> because they're giving the other muslims a bad name by by not being tolerant as birmingham is supposed to be so it's another one of those things with identity politics that it's an ownership thing that if you say, oh, well, you belong in this group of Pakistani Muslim, that means you have these ideas and must abide by these rules, which are different to other people in, in different groups, which is an issue when people decide to step out of it. Um, Mali Yiannopoulos is a good example of that, that supposedly because he's a gay Jew, he should belong to the, the left's idea of gay and Jewish, but of course he doesn't being conservative and it's similar to uh, conservative women who then receive a load of uh, misogynistic messages from the left because they are um, what is it they're, they're gender traitors and then of course black conservatives like Thomas Sowell is apparently a race traitor because they, they don't adhere to the group that somebody else has wanted to put them in so just let people be people individuals and that'll all go away Anyway, that's it for now. So let me know what you think should be done in terms of helping out rape victims while not jeopardizing the court cases because I am very intrigued to hear what you guys have to say. Put it down in the comments. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.